And I'm Randy. We say that every morning, uh, but you might be new. This might be the first time you've ever tuned yeah. in. We're here to encourage you through the Word so that you can be strong in the faith. Amen. And live victoriously Amen. in Christ. There's a flock of uh, ibises flew overhead. <laughs> Good morning. It is December 16th. Huh. Wow, this year's going quick. And let's see. And we are going to be in Psalms 145, if you have your Bibles. It's going to be Psalms 145. I'm going to be reading most of the scripture out of the New American Standard Bible. But Matthew's going to have his King James open there, so at any time we can switch back and forth. Yeah. But this morning I was just thinking of the greatness of the Lord. Amen. Um, just how wonderful he is. Uh, my sister Lily right now is at Bryce Canyon, and it's just the the beauty, beauty. of the pictures yeah. that she has sent, and it's like God, you are just so magnificent. There's so little that we understand of His greatness, but this Psalm touches a little bit on that stuff. Um, it's actually the last Psalm in the Book of Psalms attributed to David, wow. and it is the only Psalm called a Psalm of Praise. So, two little nitbits about that. Good afternoon, Don and Sella. Good morning, Good Kevin. Afternoon. Good, morning, Good morning, Kevin. I'm going to go ahead and start reading. Uh, Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray that you bless your word. Lord, yes, help Lord. us just to be, Lord, mindful of you today and yes. to, to see your hand in the world instead of focusing on the enemy's hand, Lord, or the worldly hands, Lord, that are, are working. Instead, let us praise and honor you in our thoughts, in our actions our words, and everything that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 A psalm of praise of David. Psalm 145, number one. I exalt you, my God, the King, and will bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and highly to be praised and his greatness is unsearchable. Those are two attributes of God that David mentions here. He mentions God's greatness and how it is unsearchable. You know, his greatness is so much more than we can imagine. You know, you think of David out in the fields at times, looking over the hills and seeing the sunrise, the sunsets, watching the wildlife out in the wild. The, the, the beauty that's there, the sunrises, yes. the sunsets, you know, and him realizing the greatness of the Lord. You know, the springs of living water that comes out of the waterfalls in the middle of a rock that looks so dry. All of a sudden you'll look and there's a waterfall with fresh water. I imagine when David would be walking, you know, in those areas, and all of a sudden they would run into a spring of fresh living water how the animals would rejoice, you know, how he would, to have just that refreshing water after walking for long periods of time. You know, God is great. He is awesome. He cares for us so much. It goes on. One generation will praise your works to another and will declare your mighty acts. You know, when you know the Lord, you are to let the next generation know about him. Talk to the younger generation. Amen. Tell them. Teach them. Testify of the things that God has brought you through. You know, through this COVID-19, we've all got a testimony. We're still here. We're still here. I mean, that in itself is a blessing. How God has provided. I mean, to think that we are in December and this thing started, what, uh, March for us here in Florida. March. Closed us down. But here we are. We're still able to communicate. We're still able to praise the Lord. We're still able to gather. We still have food. We've survived. Yeah. You know, God has been so faithful. Go on. Yep, uh, I'm sorry. Distracted by Duke over there. <laughs> on the glorious splendor, they're, they're declaring your mighty acts. On the glorious splendor, of your majesty and on 
your wonderful works I will meditate. You know how Philippians 4 8 says to think on these things and it goes to the list of all the good things to think about. You know, write down Philippians 4 8. Go through it. Think of the good things of Amen. the Lord. Amen. You know, it says on the glorious and splendor of your majesty. If you get your mind thinking on that, the rest of the stuff will fall like nothing. But we have to focus our minds. We have to make up our mind. I am going to focus on the good things of God. I am going to focus on Him. I'm going to focus on the blessings, whether it be just a tiny little blessing, the fact that you have a Bible to open up. That in itself is a blessing. You see, we're spoiled here in the United States, but in other parts of the world, <laughs> some of them give their life for just one page of the Bible. You have a whole Bible. You have a phone that you can access. You have multiple Bibles. Multiple Bibles, multiple languages. We are so blessed. Okay, you want? Sorry. Seven, I guess. Yep. Uh, and no, 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 uh, on six. No. People will speak of the power of your awesome acts, and I will tell of your greatness. They will burst forth in speaking of your abundant goodness and will shout joyfully of your righteousness. That's what we're to do. You know, when you start thinking on the Lord and when you start concentrating on Him, it gives you things to speak to others about His greatness. When you learn to be grateful, you know, and Amen. content in the things of the Lord, you can speak of His greatness to others. You can encourage others. Because it's not about the amount of material things that you have. It's about the peace and joy that's inside of you that money cannot buy. And that's what we have through Jesus Christ. The Lord yes. is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, and great in mercy. What a wonderful statement, you know? He is gracious and compassionate. He is not there with a hammer waiting to see what mistake you're going to make to hit you. No, he's gracious and compassionate. He's slow to anger. He doesn't all of a sudden get mad and poof, that's it. No, that's not how our God works. He's patient. He is patient and great in mercy. He knows our heart. If your heart is toward God, even if you mess up, he is there to forgive you. You know, David, when he fell with Bathsheba mm -hmm. and sinned, God still had mercy because God saw his repentful heart. Amen. God understands us. Jesus came to give us life, to forgive us, to make a way for us to be reconciled with God the Father. Don't take that lightly. Go on. The Lord is good to all, and his mercies are over all his works. All your works will give thanks to you. All your works will give thanks to you, Lord, and your good, godly ones will bless you. They will speak of the glory of your kingdom and talk of your might. Again, it's testifying. You know, we talk about the assembling of ourselves together when you go to church. To be able to testify about these things, to be able to tell one another what God did. What an awesome thing. Because we encourage one another in those things. They will speak of your glory of your kingdom and talk of your might to make known of the sons of mankind your mighty acts and the glory of the majesty of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations. You know, he's got an everlasting kingdom. We are to talk about the glory of his kingdom, what God has ahead for his children. The Lord is faithful. Go ahead. You, you, okay. you, you can read it from right there because we're about to get to yep. a cutoff point. Okay. It says, the Lord is faithful in his words and holy in his works. Um, I wrote down what I wanted to say so that I wouldn't mess it up. It says, what he says in wills will happen. You know where it says, the Lord is faithful in his words. What he has said will happen. Amen. God, f good for some and bad for others. You know, what God has said is going to happen is going to happen. It's good news for some, but bad news for those that have rejected him. Depending on who you choose to follow, the gods of this world or Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of lords, the only one who gives salvation, the only one who paid the price that we may have eternal life, the wonderful life we were created to have in the beginning 
when he created Adam and Eve. He came and made things right for us, but we must accept the gift of life. That is what this Christmas is about. The, great, the greatest gift of all has been given to you. Will you accept it? It goes on in verse 14. We're going to start that verse 14 tomorrow because it's already past the 10 minute point there. Um, and because okay. you've got a great spot right there, will you accept it? Yes. That's the question she's asking. Will you accept the greatest, the gift, greatest of gift of all? God loves you. God Amen. cares for you. Um, God, the Lord, is good to all. Amen. He's gracious and compassionate. He's slow to anger, great in mercies, wonderful, mighty. He's our counselor, meaning he gives you good advice. The Lord is good. Trust him today. Amen. <laughs> As the car goes by. <laughs> Keep a brave song in your heart. <laughs> and rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Amen. We'll see you Remember, tomorrow. Philippians 4 and 8. Keep four, that in your heart today. Philippians 4 and 8 as we continue for the second half of Psalms 145. See you yep. tomorrow morning. See you in the morning.